Stephen Kleber's death comes as a sad loss to us all, to his family and friends, to the college he served so faithfully for such a long time, and to the wider world of church music generally. I first met him when he was a young organ scholar at St John's College, one of a number of high flyers nurtured under Dr George Guest, and Stephen's exceptional talent clearly marked him out for a top job in the future. His interests were wide, but I think church and organ music were always his chief passion. He served for a while as organist at St Matthew's Church, Northampton, then Westminster Abbey, Westminster Cathedral as master of the music, and then, no surprise, organist and director of music at King's in 1982. I don't think anyone could have predicted, though, that it was to be quite such a long and distinguished reign. His first priority, I felt, was to conserve and build on the work of his illustrious predecessors, Boris Ord, Sir David Wilcox, and Sir Philip Ledger. And it's greatly to his credit that during all his years at King's in an expanding choral world, when there were so many more fine liturgical choirs appearing on the scene, including the mixed college choirs, that he maintained and built up King's honored place in the choral firmament. That was quite something. But there was more to it than that. His manner was quite an unassuming, and he didn't seem like a revolutionary, but actually the list of innovations during his time was quite a remarkable one. He established King's Voices, the mixed choir, which did so much for the worship in the college. And he established the Easter Festival, Easter at King's, which once and for all dispelled the myth that King's was just a Christmas choir, that the principal Christian festival of Easter was at the centre of what they were doing. Then, yet, Christmas was so much enhanced at King's by his programme of commissioning a new carol each and every year, something that had never been done before. He never had a refusal. All the extraordinary gallery of composers who he got to write, ranging from Lennox Barclay, um, Jonathan Harvey, both masters of the Queen's music, Arvo Pett, and me. No one ever said no. I nearly did, and I have great reason to remember with fondness how Stephen handled that whole situation because he had asked me to write a substantial piece for King's College Choir to sing at their London concert pre-Christmas. I was ill that year, and I had to back out of it. He was sensitive enough to understand how terrible I felt about that. And he came back to me with, well, John, don't worry, but would you just be able to write a carol for the Christmas Eve service? I wrote What's Sweet and Music. They gave a beautiful first performance and Stephen has championed it ever since. That was an act of kindness on his part I will never forget and I suspect that there were many others. Goodness me, he did so many other things. He started King's College Choir's own record label, which was quite a thing. He greatly expanded the schedule of touring and recording, and indeed the repertoire. And so it was, it was a reign which saw changes in a changing world that were absolutely in keeping with the dignity and tradition of King's, but which brought it into the 21st century. I think it meant a lot to him that people would come to King's College Chapel, perhaps bringing their troubles with them. And in a choral service inside that gorgeous chapel, they would find peace and consolation. And he took very seriously the educational obligation he had towards the members of the choir, both the boys and the men. Um, they left King's College Choir very much richer in musical experience than when they came. It was in Stephen's nature to see a job through to the end. 
And although his last year was marked by a brave struggle with illness, he managed to come through it triumphantly, making two or more of perhaps the best recordings the choir had ever done, um, including one of, one of his favourite composers, Herbert Howells. I last saw him on the day he received his very well-deserved knighthood. There was a lovely lunch with him and his family after the investiture at the palace. He was clearly not well, but he was in good spirits and I think at last had come to understand that the work he had done at such a high level and so faithfully over so many years was appreciated. And I think that sitting on his cloud, he'll be smiling now that his legacy is remembered and that it's in such good hands.